Today we're talking about the Sonic Sensor. I'm going to show you how to connect it up using ESP Home into Home Assistant. Hi there, welcome back to Simon Says. My name is Simon and today we're having a look at the 37-in-1 sensor kit that you can buy on AliExpress and we're also going to talk about this little bin, the Sonic Sensor and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about my next project which is actually building up a PCB that we can connect our ESP32 board onto and a whole lot of sensors in a much nicer way than doing it with the little DuPont jumper cables. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is the ideal way for printing your custom PCB boards. You just go to the instant quote page, select all your board details and upload your file. From there, it'll calculate the amount and you can order it from there. They offer, also offer 3D printing, so they can print you a custom 3D printed case for your project. If you don't feel like doing the assembly, they offer the service to do that as well. And then they have shared projects. This is a great way to see what other people have done with PCBs and order one for yourself. So having a look at these sensors, we've got some really useful ones here. So this is one of my favorites, the standard relay module. Um, so that just connects up with ground and plus five volts. And we then have our input pin, which will control this from one of the ESP32 pins out. Um, this is also a classic DHT22, really good for temperature and humidity. Not ultra accurate, but for the price point, it does the trick. This is another good one, the light sensor. So you can use that for sensing light, perhaps to open your blinds or something like that. So the one we're going to look at today is the ultrasonic sensor. And here we go. So you'll see we've got a board with a whole lot of different ICs on the back, which are controlling it. And on the front, we have these two ultrasonic sensors, the one that sends a signal, the other one that receives a signal, and then it calculates the distance based on the time that the signal takes to get back. So I'm going to show you how to wire this one up, and it's very, very easy. So the first thing you do is you take your ESP32. Different ESP32s have different pinouts, but mine has got 5 volts here, so we need 5 volts for power, not 3.3 on this device. Always check what your device needs. So that's the VCC pin on that is your power. The next one is our trigger pin. So trigger pin is going to go to one of our pins that we've selected. So we're going to select here 26 is our trigger pin. So there we go. We plug that in there. The next one is our echo pin. So we go there. We select the echo. And we're going to use 27 for that. All right, the last thing we need now is our ground. So we plug one into the ground there, and we select our ground, which is the one next to the VCC. And that's how easy it is. Now, one thing, always program your ESP32 before you connect these devices. Sometimes I find once you've wired the devices up, they don't want to program, so do it first. So there we go, it's all set up, and now we can run the ESP Home program and pull it into our home assistant. So these 37-in-1 sensor kits are available on AliExpress. As you can see, pretty affordable. And they have got loads of different sensors that you can use in your projects. So when I want to add one of these devices into ESP Home and then Home Assistant, I just go to ESP Home and I select over here. I look on the little board for the number. So this one is SR04. So I go SR04 and we search for that. And there we go ultrasonic distance sensor. So we click on that. It's got all the information about how it works. The little picture shows how it's going to come up in your home assistant. All we want to do is this code over here. Now, in addition, what you can do is you can add an update interval if you want to. Defaults to 60 seconds. Um, so you can either make that longer or shorter, depending what the application is that you have got. So now copy this. And I'm now going to go over to Home Assistant. I go to my ESP Home and I add a new device. This device I'm going to call Test. Not Test D, Test. There we go. And select Next. It's an ESP32 board that I'm running on. So we connect that and we go Skip. 
So the way that I flash my ESP32 devices is, there's a number of ways, but the way I've found is the easiest. I use Nebuchadnezzar. I'm a big fan of Nebuchadnezzar. So I actually go in and I log into my home assistant using Nebuchadnezzar. And the other important thing here is I'm doing it on a Chrome browser. Not all the browsers work for flashing ESP32s. So there we go. I'm logged in now. You can see by my URL. It's a different URL and I've logged in there. So what we do now is we go to our ESP homepage. Okay. We go in here now and we select our test board that we've created. We go here. We go install. Plug into this computer. We've plugged it in. As you can see, there it is. It's appeared. We now hold down our boot button. Click on there. Go connect. And there we go. It will now load that information onto your board. So now we go into our Home Assistant and you'll see that there's a notification already. Click on that, new device is discovered. Come through here, there's our device. So we just go configure and submit. Now it's asking for the encryption key. So the encryption key is found here. You just go into your test, go edit, and you just go down here, API encryption key, and you copy this and you just go and paste that in and then it will load your ESP32 board up into Home Assistant. So to see how this works now, as I move this around, you'll see that it keeps changing. So 0.35 meters, if I point it at something further away, 0.44, if I come really close, goes right down to 0.05 meters. So they're pretty accurate, but the one thing with this is it does have a limit. Somewhere between two and three meters, it seems to limit. So if I point it, something far away, it goes unknown. The moment I bring it to something closer, it goes to 1.5 meters. So these are really useful. There's a whole lot of things that you can do with this. Um, one thing that a friend of mine has done is he has a salt bin that uses uh, basically salt to soften his water. And he wants to know when it goes to a low level. So he creates an automation. The moment it goes to a low level, it will send him alert to update the salt or top up the salt. Another usage for this is if you want to know whether your car is in the garage at night, you can actually put the sensor on the ceiling of the garage and the moment the car drives in, it will sense that something is closer instead of the garage floor. So there are multiple uses for the sensor, all sorts of different things that you can do and it is really useful. Anyway, that's all for me now. Have a great week. Bye then.